Well, up next is our keynote speaker, a retail entrepreneur who's pioneered the concept of value fashion with a retail chain that believes in priceless fashion and makes it accessible to consumers in the interiors to Bharat. I'm talking about none other than Lalit Agarwal, founder and MD, WeMart. Well, the topic for this session is pioneering the retail revolution in India's heartland. And with this, I'd also like to welcome Dr. Anurag Batra, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief, Exchange for Media Group and BW Business World for a discussion with Mr. Agarwal for an engaging fireside chat ahead. Well, with this, I'd like to humbly welcome Mr. Agarwal and Dr. Batra on the screen. Uh, firstly, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Agarwal, for your valuable time. How are you doing today? Thank you, Vauna. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so great to have you. Uh, well, you know, we were just having a conversation with our leader before this. And, you know, there, there's so many takeaways uh, we've been having already from the first session. And we really uh, look forward uh, to yours and Dr. Batra's uh, interaction ahead. But uh, before that, uh, uh, you know, before Dr. Batra joins in, uh, Mr. Agarwal, we'd love to know how your journey has been. And we'd love to know more about you. Our consumers, our viewers are waiting to hear from you. Uh, so while Dr. Batra joins us, why don't you tell us about that? Oh, thank you, Bhavna. Uh, you want me to go back to my journey. And uh, <laughs> it has definitely been the most exciting journey. I can't thank God for uh, giving me a better opportunity than uh, being in this particular field wherein you are able to relate to so many so many people and so many consumers and so many vendors and so many stakeholders and ecosystem people you know it is it is so good to touch base of such touch base so many souls so uh, yeah my journey definitely uh, did start right from my childhood days when my father was running a tailor shop and i used to go into that shop while being a child it was a fun time managing uh, or, or dealing with customers those times but yeah gradually it do, did get into my blood and and then uh, i was able to also uh, talk to those customers understand retail from those point of time but yeah uh, uh, which helped me when i started this journey uh, i did set up a, a, a another retail chain called vishal nigamart in my in my uh, early days and then uh, in 2003 the vmart journey started and this is where we are now uh, we, we we traveled the journey from right from Gujarat. That is the first store that we had from, in Ahmedabad. Uh, from where we we started the journey and then went into uh, Delhi and then the North India and then now uh, in in uh, uh, penetrating into smaller towns and Uttar Pradesh, Bihar. Uh, you know, where in a uh, lot of lot of uh, you know a lot of uh, consumer insight came in and then customer also got graduated and which we felt that small town is or hinterland or the small town tier two tier three cities are the are the bigger indian population towns where large amount of population lives and there is a huge piece which you could convert and change so uh, that is what good things that happened with us and in 2008 we took our private equity from Alida Billa and then went public in 2013 now we're a listed entity so uh, we have been uh, all along through uh, targeting those value fashion segment, uh, being in that particular segment where customer, those aspirational as well as the middle income, the lower middle income people live, uh, people who live in those small towns, uh, usually densely populated, but are not accessible to such good modern stores. Uh, we started our journey right from there and we really got a good opportunity to serve them and got a very good success out of that. So uh, uh, off late uh, this year, we also uh, took over uh, a business operation from Arvind uh, Group, Arvind Fashion wow. Limited, which is called Unlimited. And we also now are, are operating in 25 states with more than 377 stores as of now. Uh, so wonderful journey and a wonderful amount of uh, consumers that we are in touch with. Uh, so it is so heartening to be here. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Agarwal, of course, Dr. Batra would love to join us, but I believe there's an internet connection from his site. So uh, with your permission, if I can just take forth certain questions in interest of the audience, would that be fine, Mr. Agarwal? Please go ahead. Perfect. So it was great to know about your journey. And, uh, you know, as you said about uh, setting up uh, WeMart and what lies ahead, you know, pioneering the concept of value fashion uh, retailing in tier two, tier three and four towns in India. Also, I'd like to know about certain challenges which were involved, uh, you know, in, in setting up such a beautiful and a tremendous uh, journey, Mr. Garwal. We'd love to know more about that. Mama, as I said, uh, the whole world, when you start uh, looking at your at an objective or a goal and you start uh, uh, chasing that goal and then you start believing in it, you 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 see that most of the the, the entire globe start 
uh, uh, coming to your help and, and everyone uh, reaches out in, in whatever way, in whatever form and from all the corners of the world to try and help this cause. So, but, but yes, there has been multiple levels of uh, uh, what I would not call obstacles, but I would call hindrances or uh, those, are, those are the routes or the ways to, to go through uh, wherein there are some traffics and there are some jams which happens. And then you get those, 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 uh, those pieces, whether it is uh, uh, created by yourself or created by the environment or the financial capabilities or the competitor. So there will be uh, uh, different, different uh, environment, right? From the times we started when, when we were small at that point of time, even arranging funds for opening a store was difficult. Uh, you, you, you would collect funds from your friends and the families, which you would act as a private equity investors and then get into the business. So, so have that relationship, uh, do uh, get the relationship with your vendors where they don't recognize you. How do you get into it? How do you, how do you uh, scale up from there? How do you build your brand? How do you develop your concept? How do you bring in technology? How do you enable technology? How do you manage a store uh, and then the second store and the third store? And then how do you manage a warehouse and a store separately? And then how do you build team across? When we decided to go into small town, definitely there was a lot of challenges. So small town itself in India had a lot of challenges, has a lot of challenges, uh, right from the uh, law and order to availability of basic infrastructure, even like electricity connection or a, or internet connection or a, or a finding a good space in those small towns or having a logistic facility available to deliver those products at those locations would, would have been a great challenge. The law and order itself has been a great challenge, but, but I think largely uh, there is no jungle raj. There is uh, avenue, and there is a uh, there is definitely an opportunity, and there is an uh, there is a solution to every every such kind of problems which comes your way. And we have seen the hardest of the place, the the uh, the, the the difficult most locations uh, uh, coming out very very easy for us and coming out very very good for us. So we have been uh, we have always seen such kind of thing. We also uh, gone through a bad time when we took our private equity. We we got some fund and we. We started uh, uh, investing heavily in our stores and we expanded a little fast. And when we expanded fast, we saw things getting out of control because at that moment of time, that uh, Lehman brother crisis happened in 2009. And then you, you, we had to shut down and we, we re realized that there are some mistakes that we did. Some locations that we opened were not in, uh, in our favor and we were not able to operate those. And we shut down almost 10, 12 stores, a single largest shutting down of stores in that particular year that we did. And which made us also... Uh, say no to a lot of things like not not going to locations which are out of our boundaries. We approached a cluster based model and then saying that we will not grow with uh, external debts too much and we will grow with our most of our internal accruals that made us do an IPO and, and stuff. Then we said that we will not uh, leap out into multiple divisions, multiple lines. So, so we retained ourselves, we are focused into value retail philosophy. And then we said we, sh we are not a player for a big town that's experiment small town and now we are a best a uh, value retailer providing fashion to the consumers in the tier two, tier three towns. So there are a lot of been lot of challenges that we have faced, right? From the size in which we are operating to the size that now we are operating. So what brought you here may not take you there. So there are those those do different processes and different formulas and different organizational structures and different skills that you have to utilize. And, and how do you learn those going going ahead? How do you learn those being in the ship? You were not you were no, not educated to do all these kind of stuff. But now on the way, you have to get educated and learn and then create those capability, build that organization structure, empower your team, uh, give them those kind of uh, you know mindset so that uh, this becomes a, a, from a business to an enterprise. And how does that get converted right from having technology people as well as processes which makes it happen. Right. It's very interesting, uh, Mr. Agarwal, to know the business dynamics, you know, from the time you started uh, to the current time and uh, the kind of challenges, uh, definitely a, a, a case study in itself. So uh, kudos to that and congratulations. Uh, well, you know, we'd like to move on to the next question. You know, over the last two years, Mr. Agarwal, every company and brand has witnessed a digital transformation across processes. We'd love to know about the journey uh, with regards to WeMart on the digital front. Uh, could you throw some light on that as well? So we have been uh, uh, off and on, uh, uh, definitely, uh, as you understand that the journey started all along uh, the way. Uh, when we started our, 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 uh, our, our journey in 2003, right. uh, we, and even at that, that point of time, we always realized that, you know, uh, this business has a huge future and it should be a scalable business. So digitalization has two aspects. One, believing digitalization internally to expedite and, in, and seamlessly operate internally 
having those processes on digital mode and then two is digitalizing uh, the customer front the front end of the of the of the of the retail so so i think uh, largely uh, during those times we adopted the erp systems right in 2003 in our conception stage we right. wanted to understand do things seamlessly which helped us a lot in managing inventory in understanding consumer uh, experience understand understanding consumer preferences also so so i think a lot of analytics we do a lot of a lot of processes we have digitally our organization has been very keen in adopting digitalization now we have moved to also offering our uh, our, our our products on the on the retail digital space in trying to set up our own omni channel uh, piece uh, we believe that you know the world is moving towards digitalization more and more digitalization will be adopted by the new consumers which are going to come in so more and more omni channel approach is going to come in and so that is how we we developed this uh, app and this particular uh, website wherein we are offering even this experience to our customer base who wants to shop both offline or offline so we have we are trying to uh, meet those digital expectation of our consumers to try and slowly come up to those but still there is a long way to cover for us right uh, thank you so much uh, mr and mr agarwal uh, good afternoon yes, good to hear the world omni channel <laughs> omni channel from you and clearly uh, the world is digital uh, and i was looking at the stocking of inventory at walmart in the us and you know while digital is growing and e-commerce is now 28% of the overall e-tailing pie which used to be 16% 20 months back in the us but the enthusiasm of the shoppers in terms of visiting stores uh, seems to have come back in a big way uh, what are your predictions about that in india while we talk of d2c brands we talk of e-commerce we talk omni channel but there is a certain experience at every uh, retail outlet uh, and consumers seem to be wanting that even more in a digital world what do you have to say about that so anurag you are absolutely right uh, uh, when when one world becomes too much uh, people want to opt out for the another world and the different world which they are used to and habitually people have been used to the the physical and the the brick and mortar world and that will definitely remain and especially with the kind of audience which we we kind of uh, cater to uh, that audience is uh, largely the the small town uh, middle and the lower middle income group the lower middle income group are the people who earn between you know 30000 rupees to 50000 rupees per month uh, for them buying multiple times is not an option buying they they only buy two or three times for the fashion need that they do so i for them i think still digital is uh, uh, is a luxury uh, or, or or something to look at but not experience and not not buy from but still things are moving faster uh, still those people rely heavily on their own experience because for them even even uh, going to a physical store is 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 out uh, taking an outward journey for for their family and it's it's a visit it's a, it's a outing uh, it's an experience which they also want so that is definitely going to be there uh, we have seen a high growth in the in the people coming coming back to our retail stores uh, coming in huge numbers uh, back to the similar pre covid levels once again and i think that is going to be there anyway people are tired of physical or or digital but but parallelly we need to believe that the both the worlds has to exist both the worlds will be there uh, people are getting and more and more millennials are getting more impatient more more and more millennials just want now and right now and today so so those those fundamental habits will also catch up to some of those audiences and whenever those audiences have those and there are certain need, need based also uh, need based requirement or need based customer who is also there either by a geography he is not in the right, right location where he can get those product or by particular timing that he cannot do it he will be want to definitely avail those services even online because today digital or or having being on the phone is not a new thing and it's not a luxury anymore so it becomes a day to day phenomena and we should all the retailers has to be prepared to cater to the, both the world simultaneously they never never will the digital channel become a majority of the consumption it will always be at the minority level but it will slowly gradually keep growing from uh, what today it, it may be around 2 3% in india could could grow up to 10% uh, going forward in the next two years thank you so much uh, uh, for reassuring that physical stores and physical retailing at least for the foreseeable future uh, seems attractive to shoppers and people who want a retail buying experience my second question to you sustainability has become very very important as i said you know care for the planet so the supply chains being sustainable 
uh, you know, the brands that you source from your own in in store brands or you know private labels as we call them. Um, you know, where are they manufactured? How is the facility in Bangladesh where they are being manufactured, or in China, or in Vietnam? So you know, consumers today when they buy and at every level, uh, sometimes they look at the uh, supply chain uh, to be able to look at if the supply chain partner have the same value system in terms of sustainability. Uh, what do you have to say to this trend? So Anurag, uh, uh, pandemic has really make, made people much more aware and much more aware about their own ethos, their own culture, their own value system, their family value systems, their religion value systems, and which is always, always been in Indian tradition at least people who are Hindus or people who have been following Gita and Vedas. There have been a lot of uh, speaking about all these new value systems on, on retaining and, and taking taking everyone together, everything together, including environment, society, and also the, the, the world. So I think uh, more and more awareness is leading into more and more uh, uh, requirement for the consumers in terms of sustainable uh, or ethical retailer or ethical product responsible retailer so more and more that those lines are coming in uh, as a as a retailer one has to start looking into it and it should always be looked at as we need to know that we we are not here only to earn out of this earth but also protect the earth and, and continue it for our future generation so every retailer every brand manufacturer has to do it at vmart we take we have a esg compliance uh, retailer uh, a company where we report our, our we also report into ESG. We look at the environment. We want to look our vendors into the environment, not pollute too much, reuse stuff, uh, 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 don't create too much of waste, uh, have the energy, uh, save the energy to try and produce or save the water to try and produce and even use some recycling materials to uh, product and, and bring in some, some product uh, on the shelf. So, so we we are are focusing on those lines. Whether it is a vendors operating in India, 90 95 percent of our productions are in India, and we have taken ultimate ultimate share that the vendors are also compliant, are also are are not bringing in child labor, are also not bringing in those you know uh, bad bad uh, or or why you say improper improper work uh, work environment. So I think they should they should we have taken utmost care on all of those, and also then. How do we work with community? How do we work on those uh, people who live around around my 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 area, my store lines? How do we work with them to create an impact there? And then how do we also focus on governance, uh, trying to bring in uh, governance and the land of the law and adhere to all of that and more to it, so that we are able to sustain uh, this business and this particular earth. Uh, uh, the, uh, the community themselves has to work towards it so that we are able to keep doing keep doing the work that we are doing. Thank you so much. My last question to you, that how does he keep in touch with what the consumer? Mr. Agrawal, I was going to ask, beyond data and the, you know your insights of being in your own stores, looking at what the buyers are buying, what do you do to get consumer inspiration to be in top of consumer insights? Uh, how do you make sure that you know what's happening in your domain? beyond being at your own stores and looking at the sales data of your own stores? I think it's largely, uh, first of all, uh, the today is a world not only from uh, your, your analytics should not be only inside out. It has to be outside in as well. And uh, uh, knowing the habits and change in the behavior or change in the habits of the consumer, uh, uh, the kind of the, the way economy is moving, the way digital uh, initiatives are being brought in by by different people. So how are those being adopted by our consumption consumers? How are we able to uh, how are we able to understand those and then relate to our, our product lines and our experience that we want to offer to the customer? So I think you know large part of uh, external analytics, uh, understanding and knowing or being on the road, being in the market, uh, talking to multiple uh, network people, uh, multiple industry stakeholders, uh, multiple uh, consumers, uh, so that we are able to first of all understand and gauge where is the world moving, where is my consumer moving, what does my consumer want, what is the pain that he has, how do we able to, how are we able to service them, and what is my competitor doing, and what is my uniqueness about what is am I, what am I offering, and then integrating with what are what is my data and what are the what are the data speaking about, and how do we integrate both 
to try and create a new offering and then and the and the next next year plan or the next season's plan so that we are able to do much more better uh, in terms of both product lines as well as the experience that we are able to provide to our consumers because to in today's world uh, there is so much so many things going on uh, uh, where where we are now hearing about meta and metaverse and uh, having a retail store in the meta world is also not going to be a new thing or or, or or a different thing so i think you know you need to be aware and you need to always know that this is a new world which you are bringing in and whatever has changed in the last 10 years is nothing but what will change in the next 5 years is going to be too, too much so you need to keep knowing about all of that so that you are able to not only you but as your organization is also able to cope up with those and and, and be in the race uh, before anyone can get in thank you so much mr agarwal we'll let you go and uh, clearly the consumer experience shopping experience is a part of our daily lives uh, it was purely physical uh, many years back it is a combination of digital and physical but thank you for reassuring us and everyone on this broadcast that physical experience is here to stay at least in the near foreseeable future and that uh, fmart is a esg compliant and esg sensitive company because uh, you know esg is possibly the most important uh, issue we at bw business world which is my other company uh, we started uh, ranking india's top bw 500 companies on sustainability this is the second year we really believe like uh, we look at a return on capital employed we look on roi we look at eps uh, it is very important to look at what is the sustainability footprint of the uh, company uh, so uh, kudos to you for being sensitive and yes insights come from observation insights come from data and insights comes from getting inspiration uh, and you're right uh, nfts and metaverse there's a whole new world where uh, you know virtual ownership rights are equally important as owning things in a touch and feel way it's a new brave world i'm sure we might will be able to reinvent itself and stay relevant to this evolving world so congratulations on the success of imart thank you for being at an exchange for media forum at the india brand conclave and i look forward to having an interaction with you face to face back to you bhavna thank you thank you so much dr batra and uh, what an incredible session and uh, dr agarwal we uh, we just request a few more minutes from you uh, because we've got a few audience questions coming in and you know the audience uh, and our consumers and our viewers are indeed very excited to have a conversation via our channel with you so uh, mr agarwal a couple more minutes would that be fine yeah yeah and then perfect so uh mr agarwal there's a question with regards to the gst bit now the government recently notified an increase in gst on apparel and footwear from 5% to 12% how do you feel you know it's going to impact uh, you know the uh, the uh, you know the sales or you know what, what's your perspective uh, with the uh, you know gst rates being going up is there something which i'm sure your team would be looking into we'd love to know from you no it's just a, a, a bad news for a textile retailer and uh, or a manufacturer it, it is something which is which was going on for for uh, almost two years but we, we we as an association were work, trying to work with the government but the government somehow felt that this is the right move and they have taken this move uh, of moving it to 12% so we'll definitely want to uh, 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 adopt this and uh, uh, there will be a pressure on the consumer as far as the prices are concerned consumer uh, has to pay more uh, because there are two things one the inflation on the commodity textile cotton has gone up a lot uh, so that has definitely all, already increased the prices by 20% uh, on that is the gst price rise so there is almost a 25% price hike for the consumers going forward it could be a both ways and then customer because customers pocket may not grow and the customer at least those customer that i am catering to uh, there there may be a challenge in in a quantity degrowth but still i think with the economic outburst with the pandemic uh, post pandemic customer coming in huge numbers and once again going into the uh, bigger events and and colleges and schools and, and so those will once again drive consumption and and make make this particular rise also normal and we should see uh, uh, this gst transition also being smoother for us we are requesting government on certain things but i think this is going to be a big big change for the retailers as well as the manufacturers that we will have to adopt and our consumers need to ultimately pay we can't pay from our pocket because we don't have so much of margin we will have to ask our consumers to pay from here absolutely 
Uh, also, there's a question, Mr. Agarwal, uh, from Amit Khanna, who asked that, how do you see supply chain and logistics by 2025? Now, I know it's going to, it's a very broad-ended question, but we'd love to know in terms of the sector and the industry overall, uh, you know, something you'd like to highlight, uh, what do you see, what do you foresee a few years down the line? Over to you. So, I mean, supply chain, uh, apart from transportation and logistics, supply chain involves a lot. And then that is what is right from forecasting to your order management, to your allocation management, and then to your logistic pieces and the replenishments and and the re, uh, once again, re, re, returning from your customers or from your stores to back to your warehouses. So there are there are n number of pieces and ultimately retailers like us more more often do supply chain rather than retailing so we are more a supply chain company than a retail company and re supply chain is a very integral part of it digital definitely is helping a lot in managing the supply chain uh, digital will uh, change the supply chain uh, mindset uh, whether it is warehouse management automation robotics management robotics in the warehouse or even uh, uh, taking use of the the google analytics and google reports to try and uh, route your fleet and then give your route to the fleet uh, supported by the huge infrastructure development which is coming up in india uh, the government is really putting a lot of efforts on the roads on the on the on the uh, waterways on the railways so i think there will be a lot to to, to chew uh, and it will become much more easier than what it was uh, there are a lot of such companies which are getting cropped up. There are a lot of such companies which are getting a lot of valuations. So all those companies are going to ultimately work for us and work for the retailer and the consumer to make the life of the consumer more and more better. But yes, there is also a concern on, you know, those 10 minute and 12 minute delivery lines and those, those logistics, which are definitely not easy to handle, but definitely a big challenge and a, a good challenge for all retailers to be in and have. So, so there is a lot of work happening on supply chain, on logistic. Uh, uh, the, the global logistic as well as the domestic logistic. How do we try and work on both the, 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 the global supply chain and the logistic is going through the pain and the, and the very, very bad times. And we are seeing a lot of inflation and a lot of challenges on those lines. There will be those challenges which will exist for next six months to one year. But yes, slowly and gradually things will normalize. We will once again come back to the normalcy. But yes, we need to always keep in mind that this is not going to go away completely. It will be there in your side. I'm speaking about pandemic. And so you will have to just try and understand whether it is Omicron or something else. We are there with some of the other uh, new viruses, which is going to be effective with our, our, our supply chain. And we need to keep our supply chain, in our, the vendor, the entire ecosystem intact so that we are able to uh, uh, take and give our customers similar experiences in any time or every time, wherever we are. Right, absolutely. Uh, well, Mr. Agarwal, in interest of time, of course, there are a lot of questions coming in and we thank our audience, uh, you know, in engaging with us. But we'll ask you a final question because we value your time uh, of your session as well. Just one final question, uh, Mr. Agarwal, because I feel that this is very important. Uh, well, we often speak of uh, two Indias, uh, India and Bharat. You know, uh, what would you like to share with brands which are based in metros on targeting consumers in India's heartland? Now, we'd, we'd love to know your piece of advice since, you know, you've, you've set up your organization so wonderfully. And, you know, coming from you, I'm sure it will be a, a real good guiding uh, force uh, to all the brands uh, who are viewing and listening to us today. So, final word from you, Mr. Agarwal. So, Bhavna, uh, uh, thanking uh, the, the questionnaire, uh, whoever asked this question, because this is something which is very, very important. Uh, as we understand, uh, India is such a large country, and if we just took it one state as Uttar Pradesh, which which it, if it would have been the country, it would have been the fifth largest country of India. Now look at Uttar Pradesh and look at the kind of cities and number of cities that Uttar Pradesh would have, and the kind of density of population that that city would have, or those cities in that state would have. So there are there are more than three hundred uh, uh, or or five hundred such districts which are available in India, wherein you could actually go and do business now. Uh, this Bharat is a little different from what we call India. Uh, this is where people who have hard-earned income, who have large amount of large population or large percentage of those audience uh, have their own money and their large part of them are self-employed people. So, so we need to understand the taste. We need to understand what works there. Uh, value is something that everyone seeks, whether it's globally or Indians. Everyone seeks, but largely it is appreciated more by the small town consumers. 
there is a large opportunity consumption is definitely there this is this consumption is getting inspired and and motivated by the digital medium by the technology by the information by the television by the role models that particular uh, aspiration aspirational consumer want to consume look like a role model look like you who stays in mumbai or delhi he he knows what to wear he knows what to when to wear but he has only that particular amount of money that is available in his pocket how are we as a retailer or as a brand or as as other business house uh, try to be relevant to them if we are relevant to them there is a large business waiting there for every brand and everyone to be there india is definitely bound to grow the the per capita income is there to be growing the the government is making all the moves so that rural and the semi urban and the small town grows so there is a large opportunity but yes choose your town rightly know your customer rightly create a product or have a product which is which is beneficial to them and then make an environment which can suffice them and it is definitely means it means a large business the whole world is eyeing that bharat so even we have to eye eye this bharat and this is the this is the world ahead because ultimately this population even if it doesn't do anything else will consume and will consume so nothing else will remain without consumption no absolutely uh, you know mr agarwal uh, we can abs- you know write pointers from the question uh, you know the answer you said because uh, it's so wonderfully put you uh, nailed the strategy right there and you know i'm sure uh, as you rightly said that india itself is uh, so self sustained and if the world is eyeing uh, bharat we equally need to so on this front uh, humbly like to thank uh, you mr agarwal what a wonderful conversation and thank you for being a part of india brand conclave Thank you so much Balna